Hi, so this is going to be a walkthrough on the November 2018 paper from Edexcel and it's paper number one, which is a non-calculator paper for foundation tier. So let's have a look then at question number one. So question number one, we've got to write the following numbers in order of size. Now, the difficulty with them is that we've got different places after the decimal point. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to make them all four, uh, three places after the decimal point. Just makes it a little bit easier for me to see because hopefully you can see that 20 comes before 370 so actually now I can write this in order as 0 0.02 is going to be the first one then 0 0.152 and then I'm going to get 0 0.2 now I've put that as 200 but it's actually 0 0.2 and then I've got 0 0.37 and then finally I've got 0 0.4 and that should be good for one mark on this particular question. Okay, next one is to write 0.6 as a percentage. Well, as you know, percent means out of 100. So as it stands at the moment, this is six out of 10 because that's six tenths. Um, however, I need to make it out of 100. So I'm gonna multiply the bottom by 10. So therefore I multiply the top by 10. That gives me 60 out of 100, which is going to be 60% as the answer to this particular question. Okay, so let's go on to the question number three. So question number three, I've got to, I've got a list of numbers and from the list, write down a factor of 10. Well, a factor is a number that will divide into 10, which is going to be five because five will divide into 10 twice. Okay, let's move on then to the final question, which is to write Eight, three uh, seven eight two nine to the nearest one thousand well to the nearest thousand this is seven thousand so it's going to go up to eight thousand because of the eight that's after it so actually my answer would be eight thousand and that would be the first four questions on this particular paper okay let's move on then to Question number five onwards. So question number five onwards, we've got to work out a little bit to do with bid mass because you'll remember that you need to do the multiplication before you do the addition. So we're actually using, in this particular case, bid mass, okay? So three times five is going to be 15 and 15 plus seven is going to be 22, which would be the answer to part A. Okay, uh, 5B, work out two cubed. Well, two cubed means two times two times two, which is going to be a value of eight, okay? And then finally for part C, we've got right brackets in the statement to make it correct. Well, we need a number so that when we multiply it by six, seven, seven times something, we're going to get 35. So if I add two and three together, that's going to give me five. So if I put the brackets there, it means using bid mass, I, I always do the brackets first, two, time, uh, two plus three is going to be five and seven times five is going to be 35. Okay, let's have a look then at uh, Sue and her cats. So uh, Sue has two cats, each cat eats a quarter of a tin of food each day. So that basically means that there's half a tin used every single day and she buys eight tins of cat food has so enough cat food to feed her two cats for 14 days okay well if you like one tin will last two days Okay, if she's got eight tins, then that's going to be enough for 16 days Okay, so the answer is yes she does have enough food. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. We'll move on then to question number seven. So question number seven deals with a pictogram. Okay, please do download this particular paper and have a go at each of these questions yourself. Okay, so a pictogram, there's only apple trees, cherry, pears and plums in an orchard. And the pictogram shows information about the number. So what we're saying is one of these squares represents four trees. So if you like, I can just write that in. So four, four and four means that apple has 12 trees. Cherry is going to be four. Now we've actually got a quarter of four, which is going to be one tree so that's going to be five and here we've got four plus a half of four so that's actually going to be six okay so 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 far we've got um, a representation of 12 plus five 
plus six trees in the garden, which is going to be 23 trees. OK, however, it does say there's a total of 30. So therefore, we've got to complete the pictogram. So what we're saying is we need to represent a further seven trees for plum. Well, four trees is going to be just this box. And we know that's going to be four. And another three trees is actually going to be three quarters of a box and it'd be something like that hopefully that's okay for you if you're not sure always add a comment below and i'll always come back to you okay let's move on then to question number eight so question number eight is uh, a normal kind of graph and we're being asked initially at least to write down the coordinates of point a which is this point here well we always go along the corridor and up or down the stairs so it's going to be minus two and then down to minus one so the coordinate of point a is minus two minus one OK, and then at the very bottom of the screen there, it says on the grid, mark with a cross X, the point two, three. Well, again, we do exactly the same. We go along the corridor, up the stairs, and it's actually this point here. And that's going to be there. I'm going to label that point B. OK, and then it says, finally, on the um, grid, draw the line with the equation X equals minus four right at the very bottom of the screen. There. I'm sorry, it's slightly off the screen. OK, well, X equals minus four is really all of the points where the value of X is minus four. So this is the first one, which is minus four zero. OK, and that's definitely a coordinate where X is minus four. However, we could also so look at something like that. This is minus four, three, where again, X is minus four. And then finally, we could have a look at a coordinate, say, down here, which is going to be minus four, minus four. OK, and again, X is minus four on all of those coordinates. So therefore, the line of X equals minus four is actually this line that goes all the way through all of those points. And it actually goes on forever. <laughs> OK. All right. Hopefully that's OK for you. We're going to aim for this video to be roughly about 20, 25 minutes or so. So this should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. Please do stop the video. Have a go at each of the questions. OK, let's move on then to question number nine. So question number nine is a substitution. So we're saying we've got this uh, uh, expression 2g plus 3h and we've got two values one of which is a value of 9 for g and a value of 4 for h so all we can do is actually put this directly into the expression so we're going to get 2 times 9 plus 3 times 4 so 2 times 9 is going to be 18 and 3 plus 4 is going to be 12. So if we add those two together, the total value is going to be 30. OK, so let's have a look then at question number 10. So question number 10 is write down two prime numbers. Now, the important thing here is that prime numbers, so prime numbers are numbers which are only divisible by one and themselves. OK, so a good example of a prime number would be something like, say, 13, because 13 has no number that will divide into it apart from 13 and 1. And actually, if I've got uh, 13 and 19, I can add those two together and that will actually make a sum of 32. So one of my answers here would be 13 and 19 to make 32. Or alternately, I could choose 3, which is another prime number, and also 29. So 3 add 29 is 32. So any of those two answers is absolutely correct. No problems at all. OK, so let's move on then to question number 11, which is some fraction work. So fraction work is something that um, I try to encourage you to do a little bit of work on as preparation it's always very helpful uh, certainly now with new GCSEs fractions are becoming a bit more uh, a, a bit more focused on okay so it says which one of these fractions is not equivalent to three quarters so what we're basically saying is is that if we simplify each of those fractions which one doesn't simplify to three quarters. So let's look at nine over 12. Well, if I divide nine by three, 
If I divide that by three, I'm going to get three. And if I divide that by three, I'm going to get four. So therefore, that is equivalent to three quarters. So I'm afraid we can't use that one. It's a similar one with six. If I divide that by two, I get three. If I divide that by two, I get four. So that is the same as well. Let's look at 18 over 24. OK, so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide that by six and that's going to give me three and divide that by six. That's going to give me four. So it's not 18 over 24. Let's look at 10 over 16. Well, 10 over 16, I can divide this by two and that will give me five and divide that by two and that will give me eight. So actually, the fraction that is not equivalent to three quarters is going to be the fraction 10 over 16. And that would be the answer. If you want to stop the video and have a go at 15 over 20, that's perfectly fine as well. OK, let's have a look then at part B of this, which is working out 1 over 12. And it's actually plus 5 over 6. I'm sorry about the quality of my printing here. The issue with adding fractions is we have to make sure that the denominator, both of these numbers are exactly the same. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make both of them 12. Now, this one is 1 over 12, and that's perfectly fine. However, to make 6 12, I've got to multiply it by by 2, so that becomes 12. And because I've multiplied the denominator, I've got to multiply the numerator, and that becomes 10. So therefore, 1 over 12 plus 10 over 12 is going to be 11 over 12. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, so we're about um, 12 minutes or so into the video. We're going to carry on a little bit more and see where we get to. OK, so this particular one is going to be, uh, again, another graph that we're going to look at. But this time it's Tom delivering bricks in his lorry. OK, so we can use the graph to find the delivery cost for different destinations or distances. OK, and then it says right at the very bottom here, for each delivery, there is a fixed charge plus a charge for the distance. How much is the fixed charge? Well, in other words, what they're looking at is this number here, because when Tom sets off, even if he's done zero miles, he's still going to charge the customer £10. That's quite common, you know, particularly with taxi drivers or lorry drivers, this sort of thing. So there is a fixed charge of £10 before he actually goes to the destination. OK, let's have a look at the next bit. It says Tom makes two deliveries of bricks. The distance of one delivery is 20 miles more than the distance of another delivery. So what I would do is I would just go back to my graph and I would look at something which is 20 miles distant. So the obvious one probably is 20 to 40. So it's the difference between that cost and that cost. OK, so the cost here for 20 miles is going to be 40 pounds. So that's if I just write 40 pounds at the bottom there. And the cost here for 40 miles is actually going to be 70 pounds. Hopefully you can see that. So this is 40 miles and that would be 70 pounds. So the difference between 70 pounds and 40 pounds is going to be 30 pounds. And that would be the answer to this particular question. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on to uh, question number 13. So question number 13. Uh, please do stop the video, have a go at each of these questions and then compare your solutions. So Asmol, Ryan and Kim each played a game. Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score. Kim's score was half of Asmol's score. Write down the ratio. OK, so this is one of those questions where really you do need to really, really read the question. Take a bit of time with it. OK, so we've got Asmol. We've got Ryan and we've got Kim. And the first line is Asmol's score was four times Ryan's score. OK, well, if Ryan scored one, then it basically means that Asmol will score four. OK, and that seems OK to me. And then it says Kim's score was half of Asmol's score. Well, Asmol scored four, so therefore Kim must have scored two. And actually for two marks, that's the answer 
to this particular question. So with a lot of these types of questions, do spend a bit of time reading the question through first. OK, let's have a look then at question number 14. And we've got um, angles in a diagram. And this particular one says it's a quadrilateral. Now, the thing about the quadrilateral in this particular diagram, so we've got a quadrilateral here, is also we're told another bit of information, which is that this length here is exactly the same as this length here. So hopefully you can see that actually it is a kite. It's a kite on its side, where what we've got is something like that, where this angle at the top is going to be 100, and that is this angle here. OK, so we're being asked to prove and show that it is a kite. OK, well, what I would do, firstly, I would look at um, writing in the different angles. So what I'm going to say is that opposite this is going to be 50 degrees. OK, now the way we write these angles is this is B, C, D. OK, so B, C, D. D. All right. So I'm going to write that as um, if I write it, angle B, C, D equals 50 degrees. And the reason is it's an opposite angle is equal. OK, so that's my first point, because the problem is, is that with this particular question, it says give a reason for each stage of your working. So we've got to be a little bit careful. OK, so the next little bit I'm going to look at is this angle here, which is going to be the difference between 180 degrees of a straight line and taking away 75. So 180 take away 75 is going to be 105 degrees. So what I'm going to say is that angle A, D, C, so this angle A, D, C is going to be 105 degrees. OK, and the reason I'm going to say is because angles in a straight line add to 180 degrees. OK, so it's getting a little bit closer. And don't forget that what I need to do is I need to show that this is a kite. Well, in order for this to be a kite, it must be that this angle is the same as this angle. This length is the same as we've drawn it over there, but also this angle and this angle must be equal to each other. So in other words, if it works out that this angle is 105 degrees, then it must be a kite. OK, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these all together and then I'm going to take them away from 360 degrees because there are 360 degrees inside a quadrilateral. OK, so I've got 100 plus 105 plus 50 and that's going to be 5, 5, 255 and then I'm going to have 360 take away 255 which indeed is 105 degrees. OK, so therefore my final comment will be that angle A, B, C equals 105 degrees and that's because angles in a quadrilateral uh, quadrilateral, <laughs> OK, add to 360 degrees, OK, and we can use those three reasons to say, yes, that definitely is a kite. OK, I think we'll leave it there at this particular point. That's about um, 19 minutes into the video, so it's going to be a relatively short video, but it will give you the opportunity to practice some of these questions.